Welcome back, people! Last time we left Tanjiro dealing with Kyogai, the crazy drum demon. Let's pick up right there. While Tanjiro is busy defending himself against Kyogai's antics, Zenitsu and Shoichi are running around in the mansion, desperate to try and find a way out. A scared Shoichi manages to point out to Zenitsu that the reason they have not managed to escape might be that they were going in circles. Worried about Tanjiro's safety and the continuous creepy sounds through the mansion, Zenitsu agrees with Shuichi's observation just when the hallway changes and flips ahead at the sound of the drum. Through the changing rooms, both Zenitsu and Shuichi get thrown out of a window. Meanwhile, Kyogai keeps up his attack on Tanjiro, enduring an injury that hasn't yet healed, Tanjiro urges himself not to lose. Hit by another drum beat, he manages to hold on to a light fixture and realizes that he needs to think of a strategy and also somehow keep his spirit up for the duel. Determined to earn his place back in the Twelve Demon Moons, Kyogai angrily increases the tempo of his drum beats, causing the room to change even more rapidly than before, making it almost impossible for Tanjiro to stay upright while also trying to predict the next change of the room. Keeping up an intense rhythm on his drums, Kyogai is reminded of his past, when he had been asked to quit writing songs because they were trash and nothing more than a waste of ink and paper. Tanjiro manages to dodge the claw attacks in the room because he senses a particularly rotten smell just before every attack. This determination angers Kyogai even more. Focused on beating the demon and appreciating Kyogai's demon blood art, Tanjiro gains control of his breathing and puts his attack into action, delivering an accurate slash of his sword across Kyogai's head. In that instant of relief, Tanjiro accidentally takes a deep breath and is instantly reminded of the pain of his broken ribs that he had been ignoring. Curious about his own art, Kyogai's quickly disintegrating head asks Tanjiro whether he really meant the praise. Surprised, Tanjiro replies that while killing people cannot be forgiven, Kyogai's art was definitely worth the praise. Just then, he remembers to harvest Kyogai's blood, for which he aims a special knife syringe of Yashiro's making into Kyogai's body. As soon as the syringe has had enough of Kyogai's blood, a cat suddenly appears next to Tanjiro, and he realizes that this enchanted cat is also a product of Yushiro's spell and will be taking the syringe of demon blood back to Yushiro. It promptly disappears after Tanjiro bids it safe travel. Before completely fading into nothing, Kyogai finds peace in his talent, and Tanjiro prays for his soul before leaving the room to look for the others. Opening the door to another room, Tanjiro gets hit by a few random objects. Turns out Teruko was aiming whatever she could at the supposed intruder. Carrying an injured Kiyoshi on his back, Tanjiro heads out with Teruko following close behind. Walking through the hallway, Tanjiro suddenly senses blood and hurries outside only to be shocked by the scene unfolding before him. Outside, Zenitsu is being kicked and screamed at by the boar man with two swords. Apparently, upon smelling a demon in Tanjiro's box, the boar man had made to launch an attack and was stopped by Zenitsu's vehement defense. Visibly hurt, Zenitsu cries seeing Tanjiro and tells him that he defended his box because he had said it was more precious to him than his own life. Refusing to give up, boar man continues his assault on Zenitsu. Angered and shocked, Tanjiro rushes at the boar man, yelling for him to stop. Landing a massive, rib-breaking punch, Tanjiro flings the boar man away and angrily reminds him that fellow members of the Demon Slayer Corps should never raise their swords against each other. Totally missing the point of this rule, the boar man suggests that they should just have a fist fight instead. Seriously? Where do such people come from, and why is Tanjiro fated to meet all of them? Paying no attention to Tanjiro's protests, the boar man begins his attack and keeps at it to such a point that Tanjiro has to fight back to defend himself. During this tussle, he realizes that the attacks he is trying to block are visibly lower than what is generally expected, and hence, 
It seems like he is fighting a four-legged beast. Strategizing to stay lower than his opponent to avoid getting hit, Tanjiro modifies his stance but ends up with his head on the ground due to the boar man's smack. Wanting to show off exactly how amazing he is, the boar man then even does a painful looking back bend. Tanjiro immediately asks him to stop since his ribs are already injured, but he just comes rushing at Tanjiro, yelling that he loves the moment at which an injury worsens. Uh, okay, dude. Frustrated with the boar man's endless attacks, Tanjiro headbutts the guy in an attempt to calm him down. The sickening sound of the headbutt sure gets the boar man to stop attacking for a moment, after which his boar head falls down. Long-haired Inosuke Hashibara then finally introduces himself to Tanjiro. Before he can say much else, Inosuke's injuries catch up with him and he falls unconscious. Whew, I can finally stop calling him boar man. A while later, when he returns to the land of the living, Inosuke begins to chase Zenitsu right away, asking him to a fight. I am with you, Zenitsu. This guy surely has some loose screws. Chasing Zenitsu leads Inosuke to where Tanjiro is burying bodies of the people who met their end, trying to escape Kyogai and his friends. Seeing him awake, Tanjiro asks Inosuke to help them gather the remaining bodies from the house. Not understanding why they should be burying corpses, Inosuke asks Tanjiro to fight with him instead. A completely clueless Tanjiro states that he understands if Inosuke's injuries keep him from helping. Hearing this, well, you can imagine how fast the remaining corpses were gathered. While the others pray over the dead, Boar Man Inosuke spends his time head-butting the trees. Just then, Tanjiro's Kasugai Crow announces the next mission to be down the mountain. The crow gives Kiyoshi the fragrance of wisteria, stating that it'll help him keep the demons away. The children then bid goodbye, and the demon slayers follow the crow down the mountain. Bickering all the way down, they finally reach a house with a wisteria family crest. The crow announces that they can rest here till their injuries are healed before heading off to their next mission. An aged woman welcomes them inside her house and kindly provides them with clean clothes and food. Well, she even makes their beds where they can comfortably rest and has a doctor come over to treat them as well. So, it seems that a family that has the Wisteria family crest was saved by the Demon Slayers in the past. As a form of expressing their gratitude, they let Demon Slayers recuperate in their homes. Zenitsu keeps insisting the granny is a monster because of how fast she moves around, but turns out he is surely wrong. Snug in their beds, Tanjiro asks Inosuke why he joined the Demon Slayer Corps. He says that he came across a Demon Slayer once and had a fight with him, after which he stole the Demon Slayer's sword. Before that, he hadn't even known about Final Selection or the existence of demons. Insisting that he is nothing like Tanjiro, Inosuke states that challenging living creatures to a fight is possibly the only pleasure present in his life. Zenitsu then decides to talk to Tanjiro about why he has been carrying a demon around. Tanjiro thanks Zenitsu for his kindness, despite knowing that the box contains a demon, which flatters Zenitsu. Nezuko picks exactly that moment to make her presence known, causing Zenitsu to run around in fear. When Nezuko comes out of the box and expands to her size, the story takes a different turn. Not only does Zenitsu find Nezuko cute, his kindness remains forgotten as he unleashes his anger at Tanjiro as he thinks Nezuko is Tanjiro's girlfriend. Zenitsu, dude, you should have let Tanjiro introduce Nezuko before flying off the end like this. <laughs> It's hilarious how Inosuke chooses to sleep through all this chaos. Once Zenitsu realizes that Nezuko is actually Tanjiro's younger sister, he begins playing a completely different tune and is totally smitten by her. Tao, <laughs> talk about doing a 180. If this wasn't enough, even Inosuke joins the craziness in chasing Tanjiro around the room with Zenitsu. Let them have their fun while they can, right? A few days later, the doctor informs them that they have all recovered, and right on cue, Tanjiro's Kasugai Crow announces that the three of them are to head northeast to Mount Natagumo. 
saying their goodbyes to the granny that cared for them so well, this trio heads to their next mission. Wanting to escape Inosuke's endless questions on why the granny wished them a safe journey when she isn't even a relative, and what she meant by striving to survive, Tanjiro quickens his pace, leaving the two behind. Inosuke runs faster to catch up with him, while Zenitsu is left with no other option than to pick up his pace as well. After dark, with their destination in view, Tanjiro and Inosuke are forced to stop for Zenitsu, who declares that the closer they get to their mission, the more he is freaking out. He genuinely asks whether they cannot feel something coming from the mountain. Right then, Tanjiro sets off looking for a strange smell he picked up. With Inosuke close on Tanjiro's heels, they come across an injured demon slayer in their path ahead. When Zenitsu catches up with them, the injured Demon Slayer is suddenly yanked upwards and away while he desperately calls out for help. While Inosuke and Tanjiro go deeper into the forest to look into what they can do to help, Zenitsu is left behind quivering with fear. Turns out that the injured Demon Slayer isn't the only one captured. In the woods, there are plenty more hung up with spider webs. That isn't all. There's also a mysterious someone with long, flowing hair who is giving off the vibes that they're waiting for Tanjiro. Uh, maybe that's just me. We'll see. Walking into the woods, Tanjiro and Inosuke come across spider webs everywhere. Grabbing his opportunity, Tanjiro admits that the smell earlier had actually spooked him and even thanks Inosuke for being with him. While Inosuke is taken aback with Tanjiro's sincere feelings, Tanjiro suddenly asks him to keep moving. Creeping up behind a scared-looking demon slayer, Tanjiro introduces himself and his rank. Instead of being relieved at getting some help, the Demon Slayer is disappointed that Tanjiro's level is only Mizunoto and not Hashira. Hearing this, Inosuke punches the Demon Slayer straight in his face and then proclaims that good planning can always help irrespective of skill levels. You tell him, Inosuke. The Demon Slayer then tells Tanjiro and Inosuke his story of how he came to be there on the mountain. He says that a Kasugai, Crow, told a group of ten Demon Slayers to get here, who then suddenly turned on one another and a full-blown massacre took place. Elsewhere, we see an exhausted Kasugai Crow informing a man in a shrine about the incident. The man wonders whether the twelve demon moons might be at Mount Matagumo as well and considers sending his Hashira level slayers, Gio and Shinobo there as well. Back at the edge of the woods, Zenitsu is still by himself wondering whether Tanjiro and Inosuke hate him. Being abandoned, he feels sad that neither of them even tried to convince him to join them. Even his sparrow attempts to get him to move and help his friends, but to no avail. The one thing that gets him rushing to the woods is the fact that Tanjiro went in there and took Nezuko with him. Anything that lets us witness his cool Demon Slayer moves is fine by me. Honestly, Tanjiro and Inosuke hear a strange sound through the forest. The Demon Slayer with them informs them that it was after exactly this sound that the killing spree of his companions had begun. The three remain alert to any changes in the surroundings when the Demon Slayer notices a bunch of injured Demon Slayers coming towards them. They all seem to be out of it and somehow possessed by some otherworldly power even when one of them attacks the group. Sensing a sweet smell off their backs, Tanjiro slashes his sword in the air at a possessed Demon Slayer's back and notices fine threads connected to his back came undone. The Demon Slayer immediately falls unconscious and Tanjiro realizes some of the strange puppetry going on. On Tanjiro's command, Inosuke gets rid of the threads of the other possessed demon slayers while Tanjiro wonders who could be running this show. Oh, that long-haired person. Okay, let me not get ahead of myself. With a wave of a pungent smell, Tanjiro notices spiders on his arms. Oh, and there's the long-haired person giggling along to the threads they are manipulating. Told ya, didn't I? Suddenly, Tanjiro feels a pull and quickly slashes the threads off. 
Meanwhile, the unconscious demon slayers begin to get up as their threads get tied again to the mysterious, creepy, and giggling puppeteer. Till we get a name, I am going to be creative with the adjectives, okay? So just deal with it. Tanjiro realizes that merely cutting the threads off is not going to save the demon slayers. Inosuke suggests that he can just kill all the spiders he can see around them. Tanjiro replies that there are way too many spiders to kill and that they should instead find whichever demon is controlling them. Then Inosuke begins killing the spiders and Tanjiro appeals to him to use his skills to locate the demon in the woods. Calling out to the only other sane demon slayer, Tanjiro asks his name and is told that it was Murata. While Inosuke locates the demon, Tanjiro plans to join Murata and somehow find a way to save and protect Murata's possessed companions. Just then, Tanjiro senses a demon in their presence, standing on the web's thread. This demon warns Tanjiro to stay away from its family, and also says that its mother will soon be killing them all anyway. Angered, Inosuke attempts to attack this demon, but is unable to reach its height. The demon then walks away without any further comment. Tanjiro insists that Inosuke forget about this demon and focus instead on locating the demon that is controlling things around them. Finally giving in to Tanjiro's appeal, Inosuke uses Breath of the Beast and Spatial Awareness to probe the forest and finds the female puppeteer demon deep within. Meanwhile, the demon that warned Tanjiro to not disturb its family is promising itself that the bind between the five of them will never be broken. So, there's a total of five of them? Splendid! Make sure to be here to meet the rest of this creepy spider family next time. See ya!